Welcome to Instagram Live. Now, um, I, uh, I had to, I had to re redo this because my video ended up being the wrong way up. So this is my first Instagram Live, although it's actually my second. Um, so I'm going to talk about a book that um, I ordered recently online and it's by Rachel Taylor and it's called Tiffany and Co, the story behind the style. Um, now I had to order it from Switzerland, um, but I've just noticed that you can buy it now on Amazon for £10.33, which is a steal. Um, so the first thing I noticed was that the book was very small. Um, and I don't know, maybe I was expecting a really large book, but then I thought, you know what, it makes a really great stocking filler. Um, so who is Rachel Taylor? Um, she is a hugely um, eminent uh, journalist and writer here in the UK. She writes about jewellery and I came across her in the FT um, where she 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 does a lot of articles for how to spend it. Um, she also writes for Condé Nast, which is the publisher of Vogue and Condé Nast Traveller. She's a um, acting editor at Rappaport. And for those of you who are in the industry, you'll know Rappaport from their rap lists. For those of you who aren't, they have been compiling uh, data and prices of, of diamonds for decades. Um, she was also the founding editor of Professional Jeweller. So all in all, probably what she doesn't know about jewellery and the jewellery industry isn't worth knowing. Um, so on to the book itself. So she starts at the very beginning with um, Charles Lewis Tiffany and there's a nice picture of him in his study, maybe in New York. And what I like about this story is that you know she she uh, describes a, a, a young company full of energy and dynamism um, and exploration and opportunism you know they they go to France and um, in the aftermath of the uh, uh, the fallen I think it was Louis Philippe who was the last king of France correct me if I'm wrong um, but they sold off um, a lot of the French monarchy's jewels and they were bought at a steal. So he brings them back to the US where there's a lot of new money. Uh, but they're looking for, you know, what I guess you would call today storied pieces. Um, and so he he sees an opportunity and he grabs it. Um, this beautiful picture there of that's perhaps the original store in Broadway. Um not not sure entirely um or maybe actually no that might be the um paris exposition um but i think that's the original store so there's some really lovely pictures um then she talks about uh george oh no here's the great seal you might recognize this um so tiffany designed the great seal um which is literally a seal for government government documents and it became the design for the back of the dollar bill um, so the dollar bill was designed by Tiffany um, then we go on to something I didn't know uh, collabs or collabs I don't know how to say it um, so they paired up with Smith Smith and Wesson Winchester Colt um, to make uh, handles for revolvers that's quite exciting. I didn't know that. And then she talks about George Kuntz, who is just this fabulous character who arrives at uh, Tiffany's offices and and just asks them to, to hire him. And he has absolutely no professional qualifications whatsoever. Um, he's completely self-taught, but he's obviously eager and daring. And he goes off um, around what they hire him and he goes off around the world uh, discovering gemstones like uh, the Kunzite um, and it's named after him. Um, he then goes on to discover Tanzanites and that gets named after Tanzania. 
and the Morganite, um, which is named after J.P. Morgan, the founder of the J.P. Morgan Bank, and he is an avid collector of gemstones. So it's um, quite appropriate that it's named after him. And then she talks about that fabulous golden age of advertising um, in the 1960s that, you know, if you've watched Mad Men, um, you know, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't watched Mad Men, please watch it. It's amazing. Um, and, you know, they were supremely creative and it's well worth looking up some of those um, 1960s ads that Tiffany did. They are brilliant. They are so clever and so funny. And of course we have the wonderful Audrey Hepburn and um, Breakfast in T at Tiffany's, which did wonders for the brand. And then we get on to um, some of the designers. So there's a little piece about Jean Schlumberger or Schlumberger, and I do not know how he would have said that because he was born, I think, in 1908. And he was born in Alsace, which at that point was part of Germany. But after the Treaty of Versailles, um, it, it was restored to France. So was it Jean Schlumberger or Schlumberger? I don't know. And was it even Jean? Was it Johannes? Anyway, she talks about um, him and his beautiful designs. He was really inspired by flora and fauna and it goes on to talk about you know the famous bracelet that um was named the jackie bracelet after jackie kennedy the pioneer but bracelet where there's you know, lots of layers of um enamel over a foil and this is the tiffany diamond um with the schlumberger or schlumberger uh, bird on top and i actually saw this um, this is how this diamond was set in the 90s, and I remember seeing it in New York in about 1998. Um, and there, I love this picture. This is uh, Elsa Peretti, and that just that Holston look is just I just love it. You know, with like the blocky heels and the flares and that trench coat and the line of that trench coat. It's just perfect. And of course, line was very important for her, and you know. It's difficult, you can't overestimate how uh, revolutionary her designs were because she took the fuss out of jewellery um, and uh, up until that point, you know, everything was sort of claws, prong set and she made everything sort of bezel set and, you know, that bone cuff, it was so unusual. Um, and she talks about Paloma Picasso and then there's Francesca Amphitheatroff um, who is, I think might be remembered like another Elsa Peretti because um, her designs are just stunning. The Tiffany T and uh, the hardware and the Tiffany T especially, I think it has that element of great design, but it sort of looks like it should always have existed. I find it like inc incredible that they didn't um, hit on that idea before. Um, so then she talks about the iconic pieces, you know, diamonds by the yard, Tiffany Keys, the bone cuff, bone cuff, which was actually apparently inspired by um, a crypt full of bones in Rome, which sounds kind of exciting and scary at the same time. Um, she then talks about the, the different storefronts, the Atlas clock, um, the incredible sort of witty and whimsical displays. Um, you know, sometimes they used to have Andy Warhol doing things like that. Um, and then finally she talks about, you know, the new generation and uh, where, where Tiffany's heading. And of course, you know, you may or may not know that um, Tiffany was bought in 2021 by LVHM, which is Louis Vuitton. I think it's Moe Hennessy. Uh, so it's a French conglomerate and uh, they, they, I think they paid £15 billion pounds for Tiffany. So, you know, there's lots of stuff going on at Tiffany and, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're ramping up their investment and marketing. And so, you know, with promise of incredible things to come. So all in all, I thought this was a great little book. Uh, perfect as a stocking filler and I have to say I respect a lot the effort that went into this because when I wrote 
a piece about the Tiffany setting. It took me a long time and that's only a, a tiny piece of this book. So, you know, to get all of that, you know, it's very punchy. Um, there are no spare words in here. Um, it, it's a, it's a it, good bang for your buck. So I thoroughly recommend this book and it's got that lovely Tiffany blue colour. So it will look great on your bookcase. Thank you very much for joining me.